No problem. All right, and I'm gonna turn off my video just to help optimize my sure. internet connection. All right, so uh, to jump right in, my name is Rebecca Zablocki and I am an admission coordinator at the Hartford Art School, which is part of the University of Hartford. And, oops. This is just to give you a very small, small, short background about the Hartford Art School. We are a purely like dedicated studio art school, but the positive side or the different side is that we do happen to be part of a university. So I'm sure you'll hear some presentations from a couple of schools like that over the next few days. Um, the benefit of this is that you can minor or double major within any area of the art school or of the university, I'm sorry. So you can be a painting major and a business minor or the other way around, whatever you want. There's a million different opportunities there. So as for your portfolio, what we like to see is 10 to 20 examples of your strongest and most recent work. Now, because of COVID, we are well aware that some students do not have a lot of work from within the last two years. So if you do have to stretch back three or three and a half, four years, that's totally okay, as long as you're still showcasing your strongest work. Um, we do not have any specific requirements for what type of work we want to see. Other than that, it highlights your conceptual thinking and showcases your technical skill. So first I'm gonna show you a couple examples of passing portfolios. Uh, this first example, uh, this first slide of this first example are two really excellent examples of just some really good drawing and painting. And then when we move throughout the rest of this portfolio, we can see kind of a wide variety. Um, the thing to notice about this also is that it's all drawing and painting, which is totally fine in our book. Um, and we get to see a little bit about this artist. The nice thing about this is that I'd say these first two pieces might be some of the best drawing or rendering within the portfolio. But in my opinion, and in a couple of other reviewers' opinions, the best pieces within this portfolio happen to be this large piece on the left and then the uh, painting of the eggs and the cake. So that goes to show you that it's not always about how well you can draw. If you are thinking about things like color and form, and if you have a style that you really enjoy working in, um, the painting on the left, we get to see really a strong use of color. Um, you know, this student really was paying attention and thinking carefully about the way that the form works and how they would define the edges even using this um, sort of fragmented color. And then we also see a lot of attention to detail in the bubbles. So again, they're kind of stylized. They're not really realistic, but there's so much detail within them that we, is so interesting to see. And we can imagine this student going on to really succeed as they move forward. This next portfolio is a great example of some a student that is really great at photography and they don't have the best, you know, drawing and painting, but that is okay. You know, when you are planning to attend art school, the one of the things you're trying to do is you're coming into art school to improve yourself. So we don't need to see masterpieces in your portfolio. This is another example that um, you can have a really a large portion of one type of work within your portfolio. So this student had mostly photography. Um, and the other thing about this is that they are showing us a lot of work from one body of work, which in this case is totally fine because all of the photos are different. They show us an ability um, to use lighting in different ways. Uh, they, you know, even these pieces, which are very similar, and then another one on the next slide, they're using, you know, different elements and ways of editing. They're also, you know, working just with black and white in general to create different imagery. So this portfolio is an, a great example of a really wide variety of mediums. So um, you can see the oat milk design on the top left. So this is 
really carefully thought out color. They really were careful about the font that they were using throughout. And then you also can kind of see a style moving into the next design, which is getting inspiration from 60s and 70s design, but it's still a totally different piece. Uh, they're using different font, a different color scheme, etc. Um, then they have sculpture. So, you know, this waffle sculpture might not be the best thing I've ever seen, but I can tell that the student was really thinking in the three dimensions. So they were planning out every single side of this piece. And then they also photographed it on a kind of quiet background uh, that we were able to really see the piece overall. Then you have this other sculpture where the student you can see is working um, a little bit more abstractly, maybe getting some inspiration from nature. And this might be a more successful sculpture, but being able to see both of these, you know, something more representative and then something more abstracted is really great in our eyes. And then you have the rest of their portfolio. So again, you know, there aren't, I wouldn't say any of these are masterpieces. Um, but all just really good drawing shows a wide variety. So they have design, sculpture, painting and drawing as well as print and digital work. Now I'm gonna go through a few uh, mediums that we see a lot in portfolios and just showcase some work that do this really successfully. So, um, Digital is something we see more and more in our portfolios, and it is a little bit more accessible. You don't have to go out and buy more materials once you have purchased a tablet and have the uh, right programs that you want to use, but that does not mean it's easier to create a successful piece of art digitally. Um, the, a lot of the time we see not enough attention goes into these pieces. So these are all really good examples of successful digital work. The meat is murder piece, you know, are overall just a great drawing. Then they also were really specific about the color scheme they chose to use. They are using pattern and, you know, they're changing the texture in every kind of area of the drawing, you know, the foreground has different lighting than the middle ground, the background has this interesting pattern that's not just a blank background. Then you have the piece on the right that is a digital piece that was actually started as a drawing, um, which a lot of the time is the case, but they're actually still using the aspects of the hand-drawn skull within the digital piece. So they drew the skull on paper, took a picture of it, and then went in and edited it. Um, they really were able to, you know, utilize their drawing style throughout. So it's nice to see when you can see the artist's hand in a digital piece. But the thing about this is that it is an actual pencil drawing that they then echo the, that style throughout, even into the digital background. These are two examples of some kind of quiet backgrounds in digital work, which we see a lot of, but these are successful because of what the piece is about or how they utilize the background. So if these pairs were just floating on a white background, that would be totally different and this would not be as successful. Um, they're really grounded because of the way that the artist uh, created the shadow underneath them and how there's some fading in and out in that background. It's not just blank or a flat. Then you have the piece on the right by Tyler. So again, there's a lot of background, there's a lot of negative space and it is sort of like a simple one note kind of background, but the concept of this piece is to focus on the shadow figure. So Tyler was using this flat background to showcase the shadow figure. It's not just about having a, two people standing in front of a blank background. Then some more examples of great work. So digitally, these are all really carefully selected color schemes. The piece on the bottom left, they're kind of really referencing reality with it. So they wanted to get pull their inspiration from the image and the nature that they were working within. Then you have this sort of pastel color scheme on the top left that's all about creating a mood. Um, same with the one on the right. And the lemon tree, of course, is just a uh, logo. So they specifically chose colors that would represent that logo. Then you have the piece on the bottom, which of course 
is sort of a simple, there's some, a lot of wipes in the, in the, throughout the image. However, they're utilizing this to really showcase those parts of the image that are colored. This is very carefully selected areas that are left white. Drawing. So um, the main thing about drawing that is that a lot of portfolios, you know, have drawings in them, which is the great is great. And that's exactly what we expect to see. Um, but we get a lot of questions about whether or not people need to have figure drawing in their portfolio, which is definitely not the case. You know, not everybody has the opportunity to take a figure drawing class. If you do get the chance to do this, then that's just a bonus that we get to see in your portfolio. So these are just two examples of drawings that really um, showcase the use of light and shadow really well. Then this page, so we have a mixture of some really beautiful, you know, rendering and just really well drawn imagery, and then some that are a little bit more fun, but show us some positives in another way. So the piece with the bucket, um, you know, that sponge isn't necessarily the best sponge I've ever seen. However, the way that the artists use the highlights in the bucket to really accentuate the form shows me that they're really thinking about it, and also the shadows underneath the object, and then even the the bubbles which are sort of a fun part of it you know they didn't just use white to showcase these bubbles it was a mixture of color and they're really thinking about it so we're, it really shows us that this artist is willing to put a lot of attention and time into their drawings um, and the same can be said for some of the other ones on this page um, the piece on the right top corner, um, you know, it's not the most realistic person, but that's clearly not the goal of this piece. You know, they're trying to um, be a little bit more surrealist and, but things like the highlight on the nose show us that they can really create form in their drawings. Then you have the piece on the bottom right. So there is a lot of white background in this. However, they were using it to, talk about something else. So they have these patterns that they're filling up the space with and they're mirroring the shape of the figure in the piece. These are two examples of <clears throat> drawings that are on a white background. So we don't always recommend just leaving a background white and that's that. However, these are successful because of the amount of attention to the value within the car. The other thing is the composition. So the piece on the left, um, if that hand coming out of the right side of the page wasn't there, this might not be as successful or impressive. So we can see that they're really considering um, the positive and negative space here. So that shows us that this artist can think uh, in that way. Then painting. So one of the things to consider is how you uh, photograph your work when you're sharing your portfolio. So most of these are excellent. And then we have a really beautiful painting in the top middle that is just slightly not given what it should be with this photo. You know, there's a lot of highlight that's reflecting off the top of that painting that makes it a little bit more difficult to see the actual image. But we can still see that this is a beautiful still life and the even the shadow that they're using on the bottom of the painting, um, it's almost photographic. So, you know, this th there's some benefits. If, if you do have not the best photos or you have some really beautiful pieces and then some that aren't, you know, photographed the best, it's OK because we'll have you have 10 to 20 pieces to show us this. You know, not everything needs to be perfect. Three dimensional work. So um, <clears throat> the main thing about three dimensional work is for us to be able to truly see the work. Now, the image on the left is a beautiful, beautiful sculpture that was painted. Um, and the negative is that we're really distracted by the background. So Again, this is an excellent example of some three-dimensional work that we would like to see in portfolios, but it's not showcased in the best way possible. Um, and then the pieces on the right, they all have these sort of blank backgrounds, which really help us to see what is, you know, what is important about these pieces. Again, some <clears throat> beautiful sculpture and they're photographed really well. They show us multiple angles and it's a quiet background. 
photography. So photography can be tricky because as we all know, a lot of people have smartphones and we all have a camera in our pocket. Um, so that does not mean that every photo you take on your smartphone is the best thing to put in your portfolio. These are really great examples of students that took the time to set up their photographs. They were really thinking about the lighting. They were really thinking about the color scheme. They thought about the pattern in the background. Um, they thought about even after the fact, you know, cropping the image so that it showcases the image itself. So the one on the left, you can see um, the image is a little bit more of a, a elongated rectangle, which really kind of pull our eye down and have us follow her braids. Then we have some um, great examples of just kind of a variety of photographs. So landscape, you know, uh, we do see a lot of sunsets and that's not exactly what we want to be seeing. Uh, you know, a sunset is always going to be beautiful. So same can be said for the picture on the left, this landscape will always be beautiful, but this student was really selective about how they photographed it and how they presented it. So, um, you know, they were really, focusing on the value and the fact that they chose to make this image black and white says something as well. You know, it's not just relying on the beauty of the landscape. Um, then you have, you know, some photos of objects and some more experimental um, portraiture. Surrealism, collage, and abstraction. So um, we see a fair amount of surrealism and collage, but abstraction can be tricky when you're kind of early on in your artistic career. So a lot of the time it's best to develop some concept and know what you wanna be talking about with your abstract work before you move in that direction. Um, so these are just some really great examples of you know, works that can lead up to that. Then we have works that are, um, you know, maybe to some people, the piece in the middle, um, you know, to any person walking off the street, they might look at that and not see anything special in this. But when you see this piece in person, you're able to see all the layers and you're able to learn about the concept of the work. You can see how um, they chose to arrange the letters and the words that, are, that you are able to read within the image. So here is a list of what not to do now. There are exceptions to every rule. Remember that, you know, um, we have seen artists that create fan art, but they're doing it in a way where they are completely creating their own imagery. They're incorporating other aspects of into the work that are not seen in the original. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that, but fan art and underdeveloped de developed character mock-ups are something that we see a lot of. Um, and it's, you know, unless you have a really strong concept behind it, it's really difficult to create something that is um, going to showcase your skills in the way it should. Um, using other artists photography as the sole reference for any medium is not something you want to do. Um, this is plagiarism, you know, just because you took a photo and turned it into a painting, that does not mean it's original, you know, you took somebody else's concept and you're using that to recreate something for yourself. Uh, Manga and copying other artists' work, again, fall under the fan art um, aspect. So, you know, if you create characters, it's really best for you to be an original character and there to be a lot more than just, say, one, one drawing of, or portrait of this person. We want to know a story behind it, of why you created this character. Um, sketches and unfinished work. So uh, we actually do not accept sketchbooks as a piece within our portfolio reviews. We need 10, at least 10 examples of finished work. Now, if you have sketchbook pages or drawings in your sketchbook that you want to share with us on top of that 10, you have a range of 10 to 20 things that you can show us. So some of those can be sketches or unfinished work, as long as it's not part of that initial main 10 complete works of art. 
um, flat digital work. So I talked about this a little bit, you know, uh, just using your technology because it's easy isn't the way to go. It, you want to use digital as a way to boost your skills or, you know, do something that maybe you can't do because you don't have paint, things like that, you know, utilize it to the best um, that will, of your ability and in ways that can kind of improve the work itself. Cell phone pictures, like I mentioned, pictures out of moving cars, sunsets, candid photos. Now, again, there are exceptions to this, but most of the time, a candid photo, especially one from your cell phone, is not going to be show us really like what you're thinking about. Now, we've had students that actually have these really strong concepts where they're utilizing candid photos as part of their body of work. Now, that's totally different because they're trying to say something with it and they're, you know, expanding on that. Um, but if you just kind of have some, uh, uh, you know, five candid photos of people at an event, um, that's not exactly what we want to see. Um, art unlined paper. Uh, now, you know, for some people, it can be difficult to get their hands on materials, but uh, if you're going to be using art online paper, it needs to be part of the concept itself. Personalized items and wearables that are not sculptural in nature or photographed and presented in a professional way. Um, so we see a lot of coffee mugs that people did Sharpie drawings on, uh, you know, uh, some clothing where people have, you know, painted someone's name across the back. Now, again, remember, there are exceptions to these. So there we have seen some amazing examples that we totally, totally support having in a portfolio. Progress shots. Again, we want to see at least 10 complete works. So if five out of the 10 things you show us are a, a kind of a progression of one piece, that's not enough work. Um, submitting more than 20 pieces. So if you're using slide room, which is what we suggest, and I'll go over that again uh, before I finish up, then you can't submit more than 20. But if we're having an in-person review or a virtual review over Zoom, um, we have had times where we've had to, to tell students to stop. Um, you know, if, if you can't show us what you need to show us within 20 pieces, then you need to kind of consider how you can really, you know, showcase your skills a little bit better. Um, submitting work from middle school. So again, like I said, the pandemic has changed things for people. It might be difficult to have a lot of work from the last few years. So again, exceptions are made, but for the most part, over time you have improved. So we really want to see more recent work. Um, that will be your better work. You know, even if it's, um, you had this amazing drawing that you are trying to get back to that style that you can't do anymore because it was so amazing. It was a one-time thing. Really the concept and the amount of work that you're putting into your more recent work are going to say a lot more about you as an artist. Floating objects. So just, I talked about this with the drawings on the white paper. I talked this about this a little bit with the digital work, you know, just a flat, if it's an object just floating on a flat one color background, we want to see more. We want you to consider that as something to look into. Exploiting other cultures. We have had a lot of students, uh, you know, in an effort to understand others a little bit better, exploring other cultures in their artwork. Um, but exploiting is something very different. So, you know, definitely do your research on the topics that you're trying to talk about. And the best thing to do is to talk about your own culture um, within your work and explore that to share with others. That's how we kind of connect as people. Um, the other thing is telling us that you did a good job. So. We know that you are confident in your ability to be an artist just by the fact that you're planning to go to art school and explore this. We know that this is also maybe something that can be a defense mechanism if you're worried when you're doing a portfolio review. But within descriptions on slide room, we have a lot of space wasted about students telling us that they think they did a good job on a certain thing, or they did a good job on another thing. We've had time where we've been in reviews with students on Zoom and 
they spend most of their time telling us what they think they did a good job on. Now, we don't need you to tell us this. We only need the most important information about your work. We believe that you are really, you know, strongly um, confident in the fact that you are deserving of going to art school just by the fact that you're talking to us. Um, so these are just some things to really consider before you submit your portfolio. Then again, with the exceptions. So, you know, I did mention um, fan art, character studies, floating objects. These are just two examples of some exceptions because, you know, the piece on the right, this is this, this little cute chick is floating on this just black background. However, the attention to detail within the texture of the chick, even within the feet and the beak, it shows us that this student is capable of creating a really well thought out image. Same goes for the, the left image. So these are characters inspired by characters that already exist in the world, but they are a completely different style than the original. This, this student had um, a variety of sketches, but it's shown next to the final image. What to do? So definitely take really good photos of your artwork and edit your photos if you need to. If you take a picture of a painting and in the image that you take, the color is nowhere near what it looked like in person, then edit that photo. Um, no busy backgrounds, meaning uh, backgrounds that aren't part of the work itself within the photograph. So uh, like I was talking about with those sculptures, you know, we had a really beautiful sculpture that it wasn't done justice by the image that we saw. Ask your art teacher to help you photograph work. You know, that's your teachers are there. They're very busy, but this is part of creating your art and creating your portfolio and putting it together, making sure that you have really good photos. So even if it's not your art teacher, if you know somebody that's really good at photography, if you have a parent or another family member or a friend that's really good at it, ask for help. Um, also ask your teacher for feedback and inspiration about your art, you know, you are creating works that are done within the classroom and your teachers are giving you a really great variety to work on, but if you want to work on things on your own or you want to explore and dive deeper into something, ask your teacher to help you do some research or ask if they have any suggestions for you. Um, resubmitting your portfolio and following up with us. So you can 100% do a portfolio review with us, especially over Zoom. And we could give you this feedback. And then we want you to apply that feedback and come back and talk to us again. So if you do a review with us at the end of your junior year or over the summer before your senior year, and we give you some you know, uh, feedback about your work or things that we suggest, work on those things and then come back and show us your portfolio before you actually apply again. So that can you know, show us that you're really genuinely excited and you're willing to work hard to be in art school. So art school is a lot of hard work. You know, it's not just painting for fun. You know, it's, you spend a lot of time in the studios. You're learning a lot of really complicated things. So we want to know that you can handle that. Um, sharing only original work, of course, that's what we want to see. Original work, of course, there are examples of master copies, as long as the that's kind of prefaced when we see that work. We want to know that that is a master copy that you are recreating. Um, showcasing your technical skills and conceptual thinking. Again, remember, we don't need to see any specific things within your portfolio when it comes to what medium or what, you know, uh, concepts, but whatever your best technical skills and whatever concepts you like to talk about, we want to see that. Another thing is be weird. Um, I don't know if you remember seeing the sculpture on one of the pages that was a Furby that was super long and had arms. That's one of my favorite pieces that I've ever seen in a portfolio. And the student had such a great story to tell about that piece. Don't be afraid to be original. You know, it's not, um, Artwork isn't always about just being pleasing to the eye and making something that's trendy. It's about really showcasing what you want to talk about. And that could be the weirdest things ever. Um, 
Descriptions are in, for important information about the concept, material, or inspiration behind the piece. Again, so we don't need to hear uh, that you think you did a good job using color. You know, we want to know what the medium is, what the concept is, what the inspiration behind the piece was. We do not need you to kind of have a, an argument for yourself within those descriptions of those pieces. Uh, submitting appropriately sized photos on slide room. This has been less of an issue lately, but we have had times where we've had to go back and ask students for different images, um, which can take time. It takes time out of your application process. It takes time out of our day. So if you're submitting the suggested sizes on slide room, you'll be good to go. This is just some information about applying. So. We suggest using Slide Room for your final portfolio review. Uh, you can schedule a portfolio review with us on Zoom through our website, um, which is hartford.edu backslash art. Um, that's the best way to kind of plan ahead. So schedule a Zoom review with us, get some feedback about your work in particular, and then when you're ready to apply, submit on Slide Room. You can also submit on Slide Room uh, prior to meeting with us and not meet us over Zoom if you feel like that's all you need to do. Um, but we do suggest kind of planning ahead to come back with more work. Um, you can apply using Common App when you're ready. And uh, all we need to see is your completed applications, your transcripts, and that portfolio. Everything else is optional. And that is it. Do we have any questions? Hello, hello thank you. Um, this was a great presentation. So much information, such rich artwork examples that you shared with us. Thank you so much. Um, at the moment, I don't have any, we don't have any questions for you, um, but thank you so much for your time. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Is that okay? Perfect. Okay, great.